In 2002, one of the Pentagon's geostationary satellites, using bionic waveform technology, spotted a large structure inside a mountain group in Romania, specifically in a certain area of the Busegi Mountains. The empty space identified inside the mountains did not correspond to the outside, but started directly inside the mountain formation. Satellite scanning of the mountain revealed two major blockages of the structure within the solid rock interior, bordering the beginning of the tunnel and its end. These appeared to be man-made energy dams. The first energy dam, the one at the beginning end of the tunnel inside the mountain was flat, straight as a wall, like a wall blocking access to the tunnel entrance. But the second energy dam was huge, like a dome or hemisphere at the opposite end of the tunnel, near the center of the mountain. The elements of the internal, man-made structure in the Busegi Mountains would not have aroused much interest among the world's Masonic elite, however, if their representatives in the Pentagon had not made the observation that the hemispherical energy dam had exactly the same vibrational frequency and shape as one in another top-secret underground structure, they had discovered a few months earlier near Baghdad, Iraq. The Masonic elite and members of the Bilderberg Group were extremely interested at the time in the secret data provided by the military intelligence satellite about the strange energy structure underground in Iraq. Shortly afterwards, the war broke out and within months the Americans had access, in the utmost secrecy, to the area about which the Iraqis knew absolutely nothing. The fact that the Pentagon noticed the similarity of the investigative data between the underground structure near Baghdad and the interior structure in the Busegi Mountains, greatly agitated the Masonic elite. A large part of this agitation, which initially almost turned into a full-blown panic, was due to the fact that the structure, much larger and more complex than the one in Iraq, was on Romanian territory. A huge conundrum was how the builders had managed to build the structure and the voids directly inside the mountain, without any correspondence outside it. Access to the interior of the mountain was achieved using an astonishingly powerful device for high-speed rock drilling, using a very powerful plasma jet and a rotating magnetic field. In this way the tunnel wall was reached in less than two days, taking into account the necessary preparations. The tunnel was paved with a thick rubber sheet. On either side of it, up to the rock faces of the mountain was only rock. At the entrance and for a few meters afterwards there was water seepage, but after the tunnel ran smoothly to the left, about 10 meters from the entrance, everything became perfectly dry. The white light brought out the varied colors of the various geological formations in a splendid way, discreetly illuminating the interior of the tunnel in a surreal play of sparkles and shadows. No one could explain how it was possible for this tunnel to start suddenly, from inside the mountain. In the heart of the mountain we saw something that looked like a huge gate, which seemed to have slid to the left, now occupying less than a quarter of the width of the gallery. As the American and Romanian team penetrated the Busegi Mountains, word came from the Pentagon that the hemispherical energy shield protecting another building in Baghdad, Iraq had been activated. The astonishing information was that a hologram of the planet had appeared in front of him, showing sequentially and progressively the continent of Europe, then its southeastern area, then the territory of Romania, then the Busegi Mountains and finally the location of the structure inside them, showing the Great Gallery Corridor and the Hemispherical Energy Shield pulsating with power. It was obvious that the two Hemispherical Energy Shields were in a direct but mysterious connection, so that the activation of one led to the activation of the other. American diplomats were informed that Romania would be sending out a world press release of crucial importance to mankind about the discovery in the Busegi Mountains. The Americans vehemently opposed it because such a statement would have shattered their global influence in an instant and, more than that, could have thrown their country's economy and society, and perhaps the whole world, into chaos. Through a very special diplomatic channel there was even a personal intervention by the Pope, urging great restraint before taking this fundamental step for mankind. The Vatican had already been notified by the Americans, who considered it a possible ally in blocking the revelations, but strangely, although presenting these issues to the world would have considerably reduced the Vatican's power and influence over the Christian faithful, the Pope did not take a firm stand against it, but urged that the pros and cons be weighed before presenting the statement. He even conveyed that he would make available to the Romanian state certain ancient documents from the secret archives of the papal leadership, which are of great importance for Romania and support the evidence of the discovery in the mountains. After nearly 24 hours of discussion and deliberation, 
a final agreement for Romanian-American collaboration was reached, on precise terms that balanced the interests of both countries. In the end, the position of the Romanian state was to postpone the disclosures or to present them to humanity in a gradual manner in the future. In the gigantic room inside the mountain, which measured in height about 30 meters and had a length that I estimated at about 100 meters. The projection hall, which was basically enclosed by the energy shield, was somewhat smaller in size than the mountain's auditorium. The height of the projection hall was about 20 meters, maybe more. Unlike the great mountain hall, which enclosed it, the projection hall was almost circular. At the back of the projection hall as it was called, three enormous tunnel mouths were arranged. One straight ahead and the other two symmetrically on either side of it. They were dimly lit, in a greenish hue. Inside there is a row of huge stone tables, in the shape of a T, which were arranged along the wall, following its curvature. None of the tables was less than two meters high. On the thickness of the slab above, different marks of an unfamiliar script, somewhat resembling the characters of ancient cuneiform writing, were cut in relief with astonishing precision. There was only one line of such marks across the thickness of each table. The writing was complicated, but also contained more general symbols such as the triangle and the circle. Although the signs were not painted, they still stood out with a slight phosphorescent glow, in different colors from table to table. There were five tables on each side of the room. On some of them there were various objects whose usefulness could not yet be understood, they seemed to be technical instruments, serving certain scientific applications. From many of these, a lot of translucent white wires descended to the ground, which gathered in rectangular boxes outside the table, directly on the floor. The boxes were made of shiny, silver metal that could not be scratched. The fine wires were extremely flexible and light, and inside we could see small pulses of light gliding along their length. Two of the tables were empty, covered only with a very fine layer of orange dust. Samples of that dust were taken and sent to the laboratory for preliminary analysis, but no results had yet been received. The name Projection Hall was given by the research team because walking past a table would simultaneously activate a holographic projection on its surface, showing aspects of a particular field of science. The three-dimensional colored images were perfect and very large, almost two and a half meters high. The rectangular surface of the polished stone tables had a narrow slit in the center, measuring several tens of centimeters in length, parallel to the long side of the table, the holographic projections appeared from this slit. The projections run on their own, but at the same time they are interactive and depend on who is watching them and touching the surface of the table. At the time it was not known who the builders were, only that they were very tall. Also on each side of the hall, up to halfway up, were five huge tables, about seven meters away from the protective shield. The tables offered projections from the fields of physics, cosmology, astronomy, architecture, technology, a field that featured the characteristics of several races of intelligent beings, not all of which were human in appearance, and a field of religion. This projection room was like a library of the universe, which had been brilliantly synthesized by an enigmatic civilization, highly advanced both spiritually and technologically. In the middle of the hall was a kind of podium, about two and a half meters high, with five steps that made it easy to walk on its surface. There was a device resembling a circular, screen booth of transparent material. It was about three and a half meters high and one and a half meters wide. In fact, it was half a cylinder, with several complicated installations inside. About a third of the way up from the base of the cylinder, a sort of platform protruded from the wall, and above it were metal rods with some sort of sensors at the ends. It is believed to be a mental broadcasting installation, a possible amplifier of thought energy, a veritable thought machine, suitable for a human being of about three and a half meters. About 50 feet away from that central podium was a control panel. It was not very large, it was square in shape with a side of about a meter and it rested on a central leg that protruded from the ground. It was very complicated, giving the impression of a computer board design grid, and what we call buttons there were represented by precise geometric symbols, having different colors. On the right side of the control panel, towards the bottom corner, in the middle of the panel was a red button, represented by a circle, much larger than the rest of the signs on the panel. It is believed that these installations maintain, 
in a way that is as yet completely unknown to us, an essential energy balance for the tectonic zone in which Romania is located. After the huge T-shaped projection tables, on the sides of the room I saw that they were very tall, metallic devices, from which metal branches of different and very complicated shapes protruded sideways. At a distance of about 10 meters past the control panel we came to a very large square, outlined in the material on the floor. The side of the square measured about 3 meters, and its surface, perfectly smooth, was a golden yellow color. In the middle was a small dome about 15 centimeters high, with a slit in the top, before the dome, sitting directly on the surface of the square was a container in the shape of an antique amphora, about half a meter high. The amphora had no patterns or inscriptions. It was made of a special metal, reddish in color, and had no toe art. The elegant lid did not allow the contents to be seen. Inside the amphora there was a very fine, shiny white powder. Curiously, the inside walls of the amphora discreetly radiated a faint blue light, which further highlighted the almost magical glitter of the white powder. After analyzing a sample of the powder, the American researchers were dismayed to find that it represented an unknown crystalline structure of monoatomic gold. Dotted is a derivative of gold, which has a bright white color and atoms arranged in a two-dimensional lattice, unlike ordinary gold, which has a yellow color and atoms arranged in a three-dimensional lattice. Monoatomic gold powder is very difficult to obtain, especially in the very high purity formula as presented in some ancient texts and the few authentic alchemical references from the Middle Ages. Practically speaking, current science has so far not been able to achieve this extraordinary purity of monoatomic gold powder, but even then incredible therapeutic effects on living tissues have been observed, particularly in terms of their regenerative capacity. This is why there are still very few sources of information on the technology of obtaining monoatomic gold and, as far as I understand from one of the American scientists, there is a great deal of interest from NASA in research in this direction, as huge funds have been invested. In its pure form, the powder greatly stimulates certain energy flows and exchanges at the cellular level and especially at the neuronal level. In other words, it causes a very accelerated rejuvenation process. They told me that, theoretically, a person can live in the same physical body for thousands of years, provided that he or she consumes this powder at certain intervals and in a certain quantity. The dome in the center of the room, when someone approaches it, projects a huge hologram with moving elements showing the main moments in the distant history of the planet, the creation of humans and the falsity of Darwin's evolutionary theory and of several important elements that took place in the distant past on the planet, the true origin of man. 90% of what is now officially known about the history of mankind is false and counterfeit, Incredibly, what is considered to have really happened is largely lies, while the myths and legends that fill the story books and are considered by most people to be a product of overflowing fantasy, are almost entirely true. This strange inversion has caused many problems and conflicts between people over the ages. The screenings presented the main historical aspects of the evolution of the various races on our planet up to the 5th century AD. The hologram predicted the existence of Jesus and his crucifixion on the cross, which is still denied by some today. Many of those who witnessed the crucifixion of Jesus on the hill were not from that time, but had come there from other historical periods. These human beings, who were not different in dress from the Jews present at the crucifixion, nevertheless had facial features completely different from those of the Jews, and that is why they sought to hide their faces as much as possible under the folds of their clothes. The hologram also sequentially presented the lives and spiritual missions of other exceptional figures, who truly displayed astonishing divine gifts, from mankind's very distant past. It was thus possible to watch the actions of great spiritual reformers from around 18 to 20,000 years ago, about whom nothing is known. However, the social system and the distribution of populations across the planet at that time were completely different from what is known today, and archaeologists, anthropologists and historians should fundamentally revise their conceptions of those times. The three tunnels in the Hall of Projections in the Busegi Mountains run for thousands of kilometers in three different parts of the planet. The tunnel on the left has its other point of connection in Egypt, in a secret and as yet undiscovered complex that lies beneath the sand between the Sphinx and the Great Pyramid on the Giza Plateau near Cairo. The tunnel on the right corresponds to a structure that also lies inside a mountain in the Tibetan Plateau but it is smaller than the one in our mountains and not as complex. 
From this second tunnel there are secondary branches leading into an area in the Buzau basement, close to the curvature of the Carpathians, and another heading towards and connecting with the structure in the Iraqi basement near Baghdad. From this, further on, there is another branch to the basement of the Gobi Plateau in Mongolia. The third tunnel, which was centrally placed in the projection hall goes inland. For more than 50,000 years the alien library in the Busegi Mountains has been deserted.